pretend for a minute you're swimming in the ocean. Now as you swim in the deep blue depths of the sea, you spot a mesmerizing creature that looks like something from another world. So you reach out your hand to touch it. Whoops. It stings you, causing nothing but absolute pain and total agony. So what is this otherworldly creature and how dangerous is it? Find out today on Laugh Back. For this second season of Laugh Pack, we've covered a lot of venomous creatures. Early on, we introduced you to the Deathstalker Scorpion, whose venom is so strong, it could cause you to fall into a coma. Or even death! Wow! Yeah, in last episode, we covered the Asian Giant Hornet, which had steam so bad, it could cause you to have difficulty breathing, dizziness, and even systematic complications. Oh man, some have even died by being stung by them too. <laughs> so yeah, Venom has definitely been a theme so far this season. And today's episode is no different, as we dive into the water and cover one of the most gentle looking, but also most dangerous to handle creatures yet. Known as the Jellyfish. Here's something crazy, jellyfish aren't really fish, we're hung. Very true, Trent. Despite their name, jellyfish are not actually fish at all. They belong to a different group of animals known as cnidarians, which also include other creatures like sea anemones and corals. Fish, on the other hand, belong to the group called vertebrates, which have a backbone or spinal column. Unlike fish, jellyfish lack a backbone and do not possess many of the characteristics typically associated with fish, such as gills, fins, or scales. Jellyfish are found in every ocean in every corner of the planet. From the coldest freezing waters of the Arctic Oceans to the warm temperate waters of the tropical seas. They exist in different water conditions, at different depths from the ocean floor, all the way to the surface. They're even found in some freshwater lakes and ponds. Another thing that's weird about jellies is that they don't have brains. And what is weirder is that not only do jellyfish not have a brain, but they also have no blood, bones, or a heart. So if it is true that these creatures are missing so many vital organs that so many other animals need to live, how do they even live in the depths of the sea? What tools do they have at their disposal to survive? And the biggest question that is on most people's minds, how bad is a sting from one of these jelly-filled fellows? Let's find out with some feature facts! <laughs> feature facts. Bring this. So if a jellyfish doesn't have a brain, how does it function? Well, although jellyfish don't have brains in the same way that humans and other complex animals do, meaning they lack a central nervous system and true brain, they still do possess a basic nervous system. This basic nervous system, also known as a nerve net, is spread throughout their body. It helps them to detect certain external stimuli, such as light, touch, and chemical changes in the water. They can swim, capture prey, and avoid obstacles, even though their behavior is largely instinctual and driven by simple reflexes rather than higher level cognitive processes associated with the brain. These abilities, along with the sense of gravity, allow jellyfish to orient and navigate in the water. One other good thing about not having a complex nervous system is that when one of the predators of a jellyfish, like a tuna, a shark, or even a sea turtle, tries to take a bite out of said jellyfish, it won't even hurt the little guy. Because jellyfish don't feel pain like we can. So, that's, uh, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> Food. Jellyfish have a varied diet depending on their species and size. This might surprise you, but they're primarily carnivorous. 
feeding on plankton, small fish, fish eggs, and other small invertebrates. What? I'm out of here! Using their tentacles lined with venomous cells called nematocysts, jellyfish capture and immobilize their prey upon contact. Jellyfish employ a passive feeding strategy known as filter feeding. They drift through the water, pulsating their bell-shaped body to create water currents. And this is what brings food particles to them. They capture their prey with their tentacles, then bring it on towards their oral cavity, where digestion takes place. Some larger jellyfish may consume larger prey, such as small crustaceans and even other jellyfish. Hey cameraman, a little help here? And because jellyfish are so strange, in a really good way, they have many different ways of getting nutrition. For instance, some jellyfish have a symbiotic relationship with algae. These jellyfish have a specialized structure within their tissues where they host the algae. The jellyfish provide a protective environment and nutrients for the algae, while the algae, through the process of photosynthesis, produce food for the jellyfish. Ah, teamwork makes the dream work. It's joke town! <laughs> Joke number one. Would you rather this is shark or jellyfish? A jellyfish, that's a no brainer. Joke number two. What fish goes good with peanut butter? Jellyfish, hey -o! Joke number three. Why didn't the jellyfish cross the road? Because he didn't have the backbone to do it. <laughs> Now, jellyfish stings might be crazy, but how they sting is even crazier. Check this out. Jellyfish sting with tiny harpoon-like structures on their tentacles called nematocysts. And these tiny harpoons contain venom. When something touches the jellyfish, the nematocysts shoot out the harpoons and inject venom into the target. Now, jellyfish stings can cause a range of symptoms including pain, itching, redness, and swelling at the site of the sting. But some species of jellyfish have more potent venom than others. That can lead to more severe reactions. And speaking of which, when it comes to humans being stung, about 150 million people are stung by jellyfish every year. You know what that means? If you've done the math, then the few minutes it's taken to get to this part of this episode you're watching right now, more than 1,000 people have been stung by jellies. Hold on, hold on there, Jeff. Hello, Professor Glass is here. Now I did some crunching of the numbers and according to when you said, in the few minutes it takes for you to get to this part of this episode, well, you see, he said that at about the nine minute mark. Now, based on that information, more than 2,500 people have been stung since you, the viewer, started watching this episode. Hmm, wait a minute. You know what? The professor's right. Well, of course I am. I love math. Hmm. Reproduce. Okay, now when it comes to a jellyfish's reproduction, it's a little complicated. See, jellies have a complex life cycle that includes both a sexual stage and an asexual stage. Sexual meaning it needs a mommy and a daddy jellyfish to make a baby, and asexual means that they can duplicate themselves all on their own. Now these stages of sexual and asexual reproduction Switch every generation of jellyfish. It all starts off with two jellyfish that are in their adult stages known as medusas. 
And it's these two Medusas that will perform the sexual stage of reproduction. Well, it's a classic story. See, the mommy jellyfish shoots out eggs into the water daily. And they float there until the daddy jellyfish shoots out his own special blend of DNA into the water. When the two combined, they can create a baby jellyfish. Or a larva form known as a planula. <laughs> it's a tale as old as time. But the adventure isn't over yet. The baby or planula then attaches to the rock or the seafloor and develops into a polyp. Think of the polyp as the young tween's version of the jellyfish. No one understands me. And it is this polyp that will grow and begin the asexual stage of reproduction. The polyp reproduces by butting off immature medusas known as ephora which are identical tiny clones of the original. I'm free! Think of Ephra as the teenager of the jellyfish world. Nobody understands me! Now once this Ephra disconnect from the original, they will eventually grow and develop into adult medusas. And it'll be these medusas that will grow and reproduce sexually as mommy and daddy jellyfish. And the whole cycle starts over again. So now you know the whole circle of life of the jelly. You're welcome. Now it's time for Acting Wild with Zara. The jellyfish. I'm the dancer. I'm the dancer. I'm the dancer. <laughs> this was Acting Wild with Zara. Immortal. Ever dream about being immortal? Well, the good news is you can. The bad news is you have to become a floating blob of jelly to do so. That's right, there is a death-defying species of jelly conveniently called the immortal jellyfish found in the Mediterranean Sea and in the waters of Japan that are biologically immortal. Now, these jellyfish have the remarkable ability to transform their adult form back into their juvenile stage under certain conditions. This process called transdifferentiation or just simply cellular rejuvenation, allows the jellyfish to restart their life cycle. However, just because they look angel-like in the water doesn't mean they are actually angels. They are still susceptible to predation, disease, environmental factors, and other causes of mortality. So how long can an immortal jellyfish truly live? Well, potentially, Forever! I mean, can you believe that? Specialists say it is biologically possible for a single immortal jellyfish to have been alive since the dawn of time. Glow. Oh yeah, many species of jellyfish have the ability to produce light. They can emit a soft glow, often in various colors, such as blue, green, or even pink. This bioluminescence is the result of chemical reactions happening within specialized cells called photocytes. Now, the purpose of bioluminescence in jellyfish is still not quite understood, but it may serve various functions. It can be used as a defense mechanism to startle or distract predators, as the sudden burst of light can confuse or deter them. Bioluminescence can also be used to attract prey. <laughs> luring them closer to the jellyfish before capturing them with their tentacles. The glow emitted by bioluminescent jellyfish creates a mesmerizing and enchanting display, particularly observed in dark or deep waters. Size. Now, jellyfish can come in so many different sizes. Most jellies range from less than a half an inch wide to 16 inches. But when it comes to the biggest of these medusas, the lion's mane jellyfish, 
also known as the giant jellyfish or the hair jelly, it's the king of large jellyfish. The largest recorded specimen was washed up on the shore of Massachusetts Bay in 1870. It had a bell with a diameter of 7 feet 6 inches and tentacles at 121.4 feet long. That, my friend, is longer than a blue whale and is considered one of the longest animals in the world. As for the smallest jelly out there, the Irukandji jellyfish is only about 1 to 2 centimeters in diameter. Now, the Irukandji might be the smallest jellyfish in the world, but its tiny size does not take away from its reputation as one of the deadliest creatures of tropical North Queensland's coastal and reef waters. A single sting from one of these little guys can cause incredible pain. Muscle cramping, hypertension, cardiac arrest, and even death within a few minutes. That's barely enough time for a victim to swim to shore after being stung. Huh? How is that fair? And all these reasons are why the Irukandji is known as the most venomous marine animal on Earth. That is true. And you know how I know? Because I love venom. Hmm. Cruza. Cruza. It's time for something cruza. Here's something crazy. Unlike most species of jellyfish, box jellies have eyes and can see, rather than only sense light. They have 24 eyes spread across all four sides of their bell, meaning that they have 360 degree vision. Now, although box jellyfish have eyes, these eyes are different from ours. These box jellyfish have four eye sockets, but the really crazy thing is that in each of those four sockets, are six different types of eyeballs. Of these six eyes, two of them are more complex, like yours or mine, and are known as the upper and lower lenses. These can actually see images up to 32 feet away. The other four eyes are mostly used to detect lighter darkness and are called slit eyes or pit eyes. While their eyes are not as good as ours, they still play a role in helping the jellyfish navigate and respond to their surroundings. Ninja Jellyfish Sting And that's the episode! <laughs> now finally, there are over two thousand different types of jellyfish found around the world. But scientists believe that there could be as many as 300,000. We just haven't discovered them all yet. And many of them probably sting. Now, although there are some jellyfish stings that can be fatal if untreated, most of these species will only cause pain and discomfort if they sting you. No matter what you've seen on social media, you're not pee on a jellyfish sting. Also, jellyfish stings should not be cleaned with fresh water because it will not lessen the pain. It might, in fact, actually increase the pain. As soon as you get stung, quickly leave the water and carefully remove any remaining tentacles without making additional skin contact. To alleviate the burn, try a tiny bit of vinegar or baking soda paste. But if you continue to feel sick or dizzy, that is usually a sign you should go see a doctor. You could even call 911 to be on the safe side. As the professor always says, better to be safe than sorry. Well, of course I say that. I love safety. Hmm. See? Well, it's time to put this episode away with <laughs> out touching it. Don't want to get stung. If you enjoyed the show or learned a little something new, let us know by smashing that like button. Hit subscribe and that bell button so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you all for watching. And as always, <coughs> we'll see you next time on Laugh Pack. <laughs>
Storm and Love Park. You can even call 991 to be on the safe side. <laughs> What's 991? I don't know. I said 991. I know. We all heard. You can even call 991. Are you serious? <laughs> I always okay. say, I always say <laughs> 991. You can call <laughs> You can even call 911. <laughs> okay, wait until you stop giggling. <laughs> okay. All right, ready? Okay, ready? Oh no, he's got the giggles. That's the worst time to record. <laughs> <laughs> okay, three, two, one. <laughs>